today I am going to be bringing you a video on how to make a distressed wood sign. Um, actually, I shot a really long, long video. We started yesterday where we showed you how to make this sign, literally, how to put the sign together and everything. But boy, it made a really long video, so I decided we're going to have to cut that video in half. There's going to be a video on how to actually make this sign, which we made out of three different pieces of wood. Um, you know, all of the instructions are going to be there. We routered the edges. Um, we're going to show you all of those things on that, um, on the other video. It's going to be kind of part one of this video, but um, anyway, uh, so I'm just shooting another introduction so we can separate those two videos out. So you're going to find that I'm wearing two different um, outfits because I shot half of it yesterday and half of it today because there's drying time involved. This is a wood sign that I used some Waverly chalk paint that I bought at Walmart. Um, you don't have to use that super duper expensive brand of chalk paint that costs, you know, $25 for a quart. I think I probably gave about $6 for this, and I'm telling you, it goes a really long way. Uh, I also used a three-step process with this. I used some Valspar sealing wax. That was the second step that you're gonna see. And then I ended up with some antiquing wax. That was the third and last step. Um, now for us, this sign's going to be hung outside and so I'm going to go over it with a matte poly finish to kind of protect all of the wood all the way around. You don't have to do that if it's going to be in your house. Um, but I wanted to just shoot a new introduction to this. Um, it's uh, New Year. Um, Happy New Year to you if you happen to be watching this at the New Year. It's 2018. And um, I just hope that you're having an amazing start to the year. Try something new. We're going to get started on this project in just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've moved in from the garage up to the craft room, and I am going to um, paint uh, our sign now. And I'm using this Waverly chalk paint uh, that I got at Walmart. Um, this is really a lot cheaper than the um, fancy schmancy kind that you can buy um, that everyone uses the designer uh, chalk paints. I think, I'm trying to think how much I gave for this. I guarantee it was less than $10 um, for this. And a lot of times these are a lot more expensive. We use these. Yeah, it may have been $7, $7, $8. Um, but we use these on all of our projects. Our, the signposts that we've made, um, anything that can you can use chalk paint on um, that's do you need just a little bit, I use this stuff. It's great. I've just poured some up into a bowl, um, and I'm just using a soft brush. Now, normally, I do kind of a, a rustic um, dry brush. I've got tutorials on dry brushing on the website under texasguy.com. Um, but for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead... And I'm going to paint the entire sign. I'm going to I'm going to paint it um, where it's got good coverage. I'm going to end up going over this with the antiquing wax. I think that will give it kind of a rustic look. Um, now we did sand uh, the project down, and so it is um, going to drink up the paint. But um, I mean, we're just just use some even strokes. This chalk paint has amazing coverage. Uh, it goes, a, it just goes a long way and it's super easy to do. I mean, you don't really even have to sand um, on a regular project. Like if you're painting a piece of furniture uh, that's been stained or is another color and you want to um, change the color, use a chalk paint on that and you don't have to sand the old paint off just so long as your surface is really clean. When we did this, uh, after the mean man sanded, and he did use a palm sander um, to sand this, and after he got done, he um, cleaned it off really well, so we had all of the, the sand uh, particles, the sanding particles off. Okay. And this does have a little bit of a rustic lift to it. Um, I'll show you. I mean, seriously, y'all saw me paint this whole thing. Look how great that looks and how simple it was. There was just nothing to it. So I'm going to let this dry and um, I'm going to go and get this little edge right here where the paint kind of ran. I don't want that. Um, 
Then we'll come back after it's dry with the sealing wax and um, I'll show you how that goes on. And then if I really want to, then we will go back over it with antiquing wax on top of that. So I'll be back in just a little bit after this is dry and we'll continue with the next step. Thanks. Okay, so I've let this dry for a little while. It dries super fast. So it's probably only been about 45 minutes maybe um, since I left. Um, and so now I'm going to put on a coat of the sealing wax. And the way this works is you use this stiff brush. This is a stiff bristle brush. You can see um, how stiff it is. And this is great. I didn't realize that we use this on another project. And the main man just washed it out with warm water and put it back in the um, little slip cover that it came with and it was hanging on the, the pegboard out in the garage. So um, I, they're probably, I would venture to guess $10, yeah, $10, $12, something like that. But anyway, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna dip in this wax and it's, it's a pretty um, liquid type wax, as you can see. Can you, you got a shot of that, main man? And, um, and you're just gonna really work it in I'm going to work it on the sides first. And what happens is you put it on and you let it sit for a couple minutes. And then you wipe it off. The excess. Uh, you can see where I've got some of the edge of the can on here. We've had this can of wax for a while. A little bit goes a long way. You can see it when the light is. Well, you know. And I'm going to wipe off the excess anyway. So just take your, like I said, in this case, I just have a t-shirt. And you may want to put on some rubber gloves when you do this because it's, it's a messy proposition. step to this if you want to you can go over it with an antiquing wax um, to do that though we'll we need to wait 24 hours um, before we do it because you want to be sure that this is super super dry before you add anything else to it Mean, Looks good. Okay. And honestly, when you know you've got it right, I you just kind of cross your fingers and hope that it's good. Okay. I think this is going to be all that I'm going to have time to do today because, like I said, this is going to need to dry for 24 hours. So tomorrow I will finish the tutorial and I'll get the vinyl because you really you want to be sure everything is good and dry and cured before you go to put your vinyl on something because you know you have your transfer paper that you'll put on this to remove it from this paper then you're going to press it on this you're going to rub it and you don't want it to pull up the paint or finish or anything like that and sometimes that can happen I've done it um, I did it on another project that I had stained and I didn't wait long enough and it was a mess trying to get it to where I could get the vinyl down and um, be able to not take the paint and everything off. It was a real mess. So um, so anyway, I will um, let this dry and when I come back, it'll be tomorrow and hopefully we'll be um, ready to finish. Okay, so it's the next day, and um, this it hasn't actually dried for 24 hours. I mean, honestly, for a little project like this, a few hours drying time on the wax sealer, which was this Valspar um, wax sealer that I used. Um, 
I, but it has you know dried for probably 10 hours at least. Um, so anyway, it's ready to go. And I thought just for the purposes of being able to show you how um, we are, we can make something look older or distressed. So if you're painting a piece of furniture or like we did our pantry door, we wanted to give it a distressed look without going to extremes. You, you can take a a hammer and hammer on your piece of wood. You can um, hit it with a chain. You can do all sorts of things. So basically what I want to do, I want to keep a smooth surface, but I want to give it an older appearance. And so I'm going to achieve that by going over this sealing wax that we used yesterday with this antiquing wax. Now this is different than an antiquing glaze. Um, it's uh, it's a wax and so it's going to give you another level of protection that an antiquing glaze would not give. An antiquing glaze is more of a paint. Um, this is much much thicker than a paint. Um, we're going to go ahead and use um, the strong bristle, bristle brush. This one has a square head actually. Uh, mean Man if you can show this. This is what I'm using. Um, for this brush and I, again we just picked this up at Lowe's it was probably seven or eight dollars for this brush um, we use this on our door downstairs and um, me man just washed it out with warm water it held up great um, so I'm ready to use it again so basically what I'm gonna do I'm actually for this small a project on the lid of the wax um, container there is some wax that kind of spilled up in it I'm gonna just dip my brush in that and you can see I mean, it's thick it's thicker than paint because it's not paint and the same principle is going to apply we're going to paint this on and then I'm going to wipe it off um, after a couple of minutes so um, and it looks like well you know you're painting the whole thing um, and technically I am but I'm going to wipe it off Woo! I'm going to wipe it off and what's going to happen is that the dark wax is especially going to stick in the creases. I'm doing the edges first. This is where, remember we routed those edges, so we've got some different layers here. And so the wax is gonna stick in those layers. I'm out of wax on the lid, so. And you, you know, just, Kind of put some nice even strokes in there. Um, I'm working it into the grooves where we have the routed edges and if you're using a plaque that you buy, a pre-cut plaque, um, you know they already have the routed edges which are pretty um, and uh, give a little bit of extra visual interest to the piece. Okay and then I'm just going to paint it right on top And I don't have to be, you know, super precise because I'm going to wipe it off. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not doing any particular, you know, stroke or anything like that. I'm just getting it on here. And by the time I get down to where I'm wiping it off, I'll start at the top and on the edges. And um, my minute or two, because you want to give it a little bit of time to grab on, I guess, is why they say that you should wait a minute or two before you start wiping it off. And again, I'm going to wipe it off with a clean, uh, lint-free rag, which really is honestly just an old white t-shirt that I've cut up. Okay. So I've got all of the sign covered in this wax. I'm going to hold it up so you can see and make sure. Yeah, I've got all the edges done. And I, you can see I painted the back of it too. That was awkward, but you can see what I did there. Okay, so now I'm going to start wiping off. Just have this t-shirt. You might want to wear gloves for this. It, you know, it's going to it's messy. And now I'm starting to wipe off. I'm wiping the edges 
this first. And it's really, I mean, it's, it's not difficult. But you can see it's kind of getting a wood grain look. And I want to be able to see the, the color of the paint underneath. So I'm going to continue to wipe it off. Get in a clean spot. Look at this, it's beautiful. Although, you know, I'm a little bit worried I'm going to have to take off as much as I can because I did use brown letters um, on my vinyl. So. Holding on the back to this brace just makes it kind of nice. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to wipe in the other direction just to be sure we've got some consistency. Roll this over. you see any places where you know it feels, you feel like you have extra wax, wipe a little harder there to wipe it off. But I think we're just about done. What do you think, Mean Man? It's good. I think it looks good. Hit under the bottom of the braces with the antiquing wax. Oh, I see. Um, He's, he's asked me that the braces kind of come down to the bottom. They may be seen. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit them a little bit with this leftover wax. Oh, actually, I'm going to dab it. And I'm going to wipe it off. You know, you're not super concerned about this because it's not. likely to be seen, but it could be. So there we go. That's how it's going to come out and look. Now I'm going to give this a chance to dry. Um, I'm probably going to let this dry for a couple of hours and then I'm going to come back in and put our vinyl transfer on there and uh, put the hangers on it and show you how it's going to look. Actually, it's going to be the top show how, how it'll look on our sign and we'll be back just as soon as this dries and finish the project for you okay here I'm showing you my design that's being cut out by the silhouette um, I decided to go with brown let me move this light down here y'all can kind of see what I'm doing um, I decided to go with brown I created this um, image to put on the sign with the Silhouette Studio. Um, all these different vinyl cutters have their own um, have their own software. I'm assuming um, I just use the Silhouette. It seems to be easiest for me. And what I did with this is I just took this love from another design. As a matter of fact, I think I can show you in my library. Um, maybe. Just did a search for love, and these are all of the images that I have downloaded. And where did I find that love? You can see here um, that I found this love right here, and that's what I used. I separated it out from the rest of the image, and then I just used that as my love. I found a heart. I've got some images downloaded. I downloaded that heart and then I just used the text tool to type in lives here and Kimbro and that's just a basic font. Okay so now this is dried for a couple of hours and I'm ready to put my transfer or my vinyl onto the transfer paper to put onto the project itself. 
It's my least favorite thing to do. Um, I, I've got this big roll of transfer paper um, that I ordered off of Amazon, I think. Um, it, it works pretty good, um, but you know, it's always dicey when you're trying to get your, your vinyl to come off, you know, well and measuring out your transfer paper and all of that, which I've already done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the vinyl onto, huh, well, that's nice. I got some foreign, looks like a piece of mesh. If you're familiar with all my videos, you know I do a lot of um, mesh breathe tutorials. Um, I'm gonna have to get that out of there. Which is fine, as you can see, it's not sticking yet. And that, that's the tricky thing. Um, and I use, I think I've got an old credit card that I use most of the time. You know what I'm gonna do? This is something, let's see, I'm gonna try this first. This is just a cutting thing that I use. Um, when I'm cutting mesh and things with the roller. So I'm trying to make sure that I have it stuck really well to the transfer paper. Because I want it to all come off and not leave anything behind. Just pay really close attention when you're starting to peel it off and see, make sure you're not leaving anything that the whole thing is actually seeing. It's not coming off. Oh, that's frustrating. There we go. I think it's good for you to see the actual as it happens and not, um, I could have just done it where I had it already on the transfer paper, but I want you to see that it doesn't always go perfectly and you just have to be patient, which I'm terrible at. I usually just get super frustrated and want to just chuck the whole thing. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay the course. So just bear with me. And kind of come down at an angle and, you know, you want to pull down. Okay, now as I'm seeing my, and I've got a pretty big vinyl here, so it's going to take just a second to be sure it's all coming. And especially your little bitty pieces. A lot of times, if a big enough piece starts, the rest of it will just come along with it that you don't want to lose like your dots for your eyes and um, things like that. Come on and let go. There we go, finally. the thing too you know you don't want your contact paper or your transfer paper to be so sticky that it isn't going to want to release your letters once you get it to the place that you need it to be so it's just a tricky thing and just be patient as I said what is that for keep that down oh Yeah, it all tends to curl up, so. Just be careful that you're not touching your vinyl, the underside of your vinyl, because you want to keep all the sticky on the vinyl itself. Boom, finally. Okay, so I've got my transfer, I mean, I've got my vinyl onto the transfer paper. And then the trickiest part 
is to get it on to your project and where it's straight and sort of centered and it can be a real optical illusion because of the transfer paper. Let's see. Because there's a grid on mine. Honestly, I'd rather have one that didn't have a grid because it really does create a bit of an op optical illusion. So when you think you have it about right, I'm going to let go. I'm not pressing anything down. Um, let's say, you know what, I'm going to measure real fast. So, to where that starts, just a little over an inch. And where that starts, where that ends, and it's about an inch. So I'm a little, I'm a little off. Okay, and then I've got some electricity that's I'm dealing with too that's kind of making me stick. You know what? I think that's good enough. We're going to go with it. So I'm going to start the process of transferring this now onto the board. The process is just the same as getting it onto the transfer paper. Just trying to concentrate on the letters. I'm kind of going at an angle, not necessarily straight up and down. I'm going to start in this corner. And I'm going to just peel it back. Making sure that all my letters are coming off. You have just witnessed a miracle. Came off. Now they say you can reuse your transfer paper. Now this transfer paper is not super duper sticky, and so um, I usually will save it. I'm gonna put it right back on here. Oh, you know what? You did not witness a miracle because there's an E that's missing. You see on here? There's an E right there. This E is giving me trouble since I started this whole project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back. To where the E should be. Oh, uh, get off of that. Okay, I'm gonna fold that over a little bit so it doesn't stick to anything else. And I'm gonna place the E where it should be. You know, and it's probably not gonna be exactly perfect, but I'm not gonna stress over it. Get off of there, you E. Okay, now, <laughs> now you can see, well, you know what, if I hadn't tried to save that transfer paper, I wouldn't have noticed that, that, Hold that, it back up. that, oh, that he didn't make it. There we go. So, I mean, I love, 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 love the way this looks. I'm going to put this back, this transfer paper, back on the sheet from where I peeled it. So, technically it can be used again. We'll see if that's ever going to be possible. But, the only thing left for this project would be to put our hooks on here to hang. And that's going to be strictly up to you. Um, you can do, you know, two eye hooks with the picture frame or the picture hanging wire across it where you just have one place to hold it. Um, for our projects, 
we've got a post that we're going to hang it on and I'm going to secure two hangers at some point. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I'll take this out. I'll hold it up to my, my post and um, get those measurements and then the main man will secure those for me and we'll hang it up. But, and that's a really good thing too. You can see here, this was the color before um, that came with this. And you know what I never told you what the color it's called? Pool. Pool. That's what color it was. But now, this is how it looks after using the sealing wax first, and then the antiquing wax secondly. And that's what gave this great kind of um, interesting aged look to this sign. And uh, just be aware of that when you're doing it, if you're gonna put vinyl on here, um, that you don't paint your sign darker than the vinyl that you're going to use. Once I put this antiquing on there, I thought, oh gosh, I hope that that was going to be dark enough. To me, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, I hope that you try this. If you've got any questions, leave the questions um, in the comments, and I always answer every comment, um, every question. Um, I'll definitely let you know that I'm paying attention to you. Be sure and go to underatexasky.com for all of our projects, which include everything from, uh, I've got a bajillion wreath making tutorials and um, how to create a table, you know, a farmhouse table. I've got uh, tutorials on the pantry door that we did where we did this technique on, a, on an entire door, which is fantastic. Um, there's just a whole plethora of things that you can find there home interior, decorating, all of that stuff, um, it can be found there. So go and be sure and check out under uh, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We put out videos every few months. Um, we, we try to do once a month. It gets really sticky. We both, uh, the mean man and I both work full-time jobs. But we sure do appreciate y'all, um, everybody, the, all of my subscribers. I love you. I love your comments. Um, it means so much to me. I wish you guys blessings for the new year. And I hope that um, everything just goes wonderfully for you in this upcoming year. And we will see you again real soon. Thanks. <music>